just waiting for the band to arrive. Um, this is what I do, I just basically stand here and creepily look out the window. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Um, yeah, drums today. That'll be fun, as always. Yeah, I'll take you through the live room. Um, <laughs> there we go. And we're in the live room. There's the drums all ready to go. The drum, the Ritual Studios drum mat. Uh, I used to use a, a carpet, but that's way handy with the old little pearl lip on it. Saves you kick coming over here, ending up like the other side of the room. So we've got the drum kit set up, everything's up and ready to go, we've got the tones we want, um, I will play a clip of Corey playing the kit now. Explain what I've got going on on the kit. Let's have a look. Uh, 91 in the kick, just literally laid on the padding that's in there. Um, outside of it, we've got one of the D112s, which to be honest, like I kind of love them and hate them. Like sometimes they can absolutely save a kick, and I mean, on their own, they sound like a potato, but they do work sometimes. They do give you that kind of mid range push that you sometimes need, I always find. Uh, you've got the, God, I'm trying to point at this, uh, there, the Beta 57, kind of rejecting the hat, trying to trying to get that away from the hat. Um, they're, they're really good. They're pretty, pretty standard. I think underneath I've got a standard 57. You can see it. Yeah. If I bring that round, you can see that there. Just your standard 57. Um, Christ. I look like a fucking beached whale. Uh, got a moon gel. Got one moon gel on the on the snare. Um, without it, it was a little ringy. And with it, it just kind of makes it that little bit drier. Um, kind of suits the suits the style more than anything. Uh, D twos on the toms. D six on the floor tom. They're pretty good. They sound pretty scooped. Corey's just walked in. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we've got Octavas up on the overheads, uh, SEs on the uh, ride and hat. 414 is on the China, if I bring that round. 414 is on there, overlooking the China. That's a pretty cool shot. My big fat belly. Oh, look at that. Whoa, get a good look at that. Pair of room mics. And then I've also got a mic in here. Just hide in there, and it's pretty dull. I'll play. I'll play the difference between the rooms and the one that's in there now. I think you should go full Phil Collins, me.
Very good, very nice. Very nice. Very sexy, I like it. <laughs> hey Corey, you know these these drum kits? Yeah. They're they're not all they're cracked up to be. <laughs> Morning, day two. Look at this dribble on your chin. Get rid of that, get rid of that dribble. So yesterday we got all the rhythm guitars done, all the drums done. <sighs> um, so yeah, today we're gonna knock bass out, which should take an hour. Um, I'll just take the DI and then that's that. Um, I think pe people who are maybe uh, less experienced in recording, probably spend a lot of time fucking about with bass. At the end of the day, if you get a good bass, stick it straight into a decent DI. You're, you're laughing, really. Yeah, then after bass, we'll do intersperse, like leads and vocals. I think it's important to kind of let your vocalist have a bit of a rest. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sort of fine balance I always find between sort of overworking a guy. So, I, I don't know, it depends, man. There's different vocalists, certain vocalists are like, just keep going, keep going, and they're fine, and they can do it. And then others blow their voice out. A nice early start. I don't think anybody in the village is up, but we're starting the day playing with the key in the lock. If that ever goes missing, he's either eating it or hidden it. Mwah. I'm gonna head up to the studio in about half an hour. I'm just like, should I be looking at the camera? Is this creepy if I talk like this? Hello? I think that's weird. I'll just look at I'll, I'll just look at myself. At least that way, if I do something weird, I can spot it. Are you coming to the studio today, or do you just want my phone? Probably. Yeah, one thing I didn't do yesterday was drink enough water. Um, I got to like the end of the day, and my headache just came in like right in the middle of my head. But it was definitely just dehydration. I got home and had like I think four pints of water between getting in and going to bed and the headache just went. It's one thing I often forget, because I'm just like, you just work and work and work and work, and it's sometimes you need to be like, okay, stop and go and have a pint of water. <laughs> like, studio stuff, especially editing day to day, you can get, if you, you can get such brain fog. I remember when I was like at college and stuff, and you'd do an exam for like two hours, and you'd end the exam, and you'd, you'd be like, oh my God, I'm f like physically tired from that like all like concentration is a fucking it really tires you out man yeah gonna try and drink a bit more a bit more water a bit more fluid today if it's not water i might go for a juice who knows let's cut to me at the studio boom So I've arrived um, about an hour early, so I just decided I'm gonna go for a little half an hour walk, try and get some fresh air and get the get the blood pumping a little bit, bit of a brisk wander. You'll notice, same jumper, but uh, I don't sweat profusely, especially when I'm just doing drum tracking and guitar tracking. Basically just sat on my ass, so had a sniff of it this morning, perfectly fine. So anyone that was gonna comment like, oh, he's got the same jumper on. Well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I have, and it, it, it might be a bit scruffy, but less washing. So think about that one when you're going through your personal non-bio tablets. I feel a bit like Alan Partridge doing this. If you chop someone's tree down without the landowner's permission, you can be hanged for it. Just have a big, aha! I tell you what, it is today. It's fucking foggy. Uh, Ghost in the Fog by Opeth. That could be playing in the background. As Desiree says, I'd rather, uh, I don't want to see a ghost. I'd rather have a piece of toast. One of the, one of the world's worst shit. I've just, I have just had an Alan Partridge. Um, just put my foot in a pothole. Um, yeah, one of the world, world's worst ever lyrics. Yeah, I was really happy with the, the tones that we got yesterday. They were they were really good. Back to back to studio talk. The drum tones we got, I was really happy with those. And uh like I've worked with a band before, so guitar wise I kinda kinda know what they're going with. And last time we used my 5153 profile. I actually used Nathan from Sathamel's 5153. He came down for the day and we just sat and profiled that. That was great. But yeah, like I used that profile so like those those are 
they're really really good they're like i don't know what i, I don't know what it is about them that's better than the is it better than the 65 or it's different but like they've got more bite it's like a bit more it's a bit more ag ag short for aggressive uh in the world of i don't know is that towie don't get ag make a fucking egg with me mate i tell you um one thing i found interesting yesterday um the tama snare that we used it's like lower end tama snare like you can pick them up for a couple hundred quid and like if you know what you're doing tuning and you stick like fresh heads on and stuff man you can't fucking go wrong like it sounds sick like it really does work a lot of the time you can you can sort of worry about really super high-end gear and at the end of the day just good enough good enough gear with a little bit of knowledge can really can really put you there so, so say hi to these hello you all right hi. hello hi. i'll keep the uh keep the cyclists from the village happy actually speaking of village talk i think there's uh there's a, there's a tree that is up for a bit of debate because it's uh, near a church and it might fall on the church. So all the people who are involved with the church are all like, oh, get it cut down, which to be fair is probably the right idea. But then obviously you get people who just love, fucking love trees. And uh, trees are great and very important, but uh, you don't want to fucking fall on your house, put it that way. God, there's another cyclist. They're all at it today. I was, I was thinking it's like the most... Morning. I was thinking it, Christ, it looked like Dominic Cummins. Fuck! Yeah, it's like the most black metal thing that you could do as opposed to burning the church down. You just think, I'm gonna plant a tree and in a hundred years time, it may or may not fall on that church. Like a big oak or something. So back at the studio, um, I'm gonna pack all this away before the band arrive. <laughs> oh yeah, fucking shake that leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a two count, so it's like one, two, so it's like oh, which? Just like rest, rest. Start on the F. So it's like, oh, lying to me, boy. <laughs> 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 yeah one thing about um this band is they're, they're sort of a relatively um uh, sort of new young band like younger guys and i always find that like younger bands have like that they've, they've got this like enthusiasm that kind of as a producer you, you you feed off that they kind of get excited about like the the things that kind of you kind of take for granted maybe like little little sort of production tricks that you show them and they go like oh my god that's, that's making that song amazing you know and you think that's that's really cool to to see that and it, it kind of inspires me and i think it's something that i'll be like well i'll just take that for granted um and it's so weird but like the flip side is obviously you have to kind of maybe do a little bit more explaining than you do with a more experienced band like more experienced band will just be like, yeah, we know, like we we know that mate, like we don't care. <laughs> you know, like they're not they're not bothered by you know what compressor you're using. It's just like, yeah, they literally don't care, mate, as long as it sounds good. 
which I quite like as well. It's just like, they just let you crack on and do your job. Yeah, so this is day three. Um, band went home yesterday. So we did the single, knocked that out in two days. Um, I'm just here. I'm gonna have a, an edit and put stuff together and get it ready to mix. So what I wanna know is, what is your favorite? Um, you know, they used to have like, I don't know if they have them now as much. I, they, I think they're doing like big cities and stuff. Um, but you know, like metal nightclubs, uh, I want to know what are your what are your favourite metal night classic metal night cl club songs. Don't, it doesn't have to be your favourite song. Just has to be what song. If you walked into a metal nightclub, what song is playing? For example, um, I'm gonna go for I push my fingers into my eyes. Duality by Slipknot. That one. That's always playing. Summit by Ramstein. Uh, perhaps uh, Do Hast by Ramstein and uh, the classic one that always plays that little halo <laughs> every every metal nightclub has that song uh, is that soil I don't know I, I think it is leave your leave your favorite metal nightclub songs <laughs> in the comments oh god there'll be some absolute corkers right um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, um, I should probably in the future try and make it a little bit more techy studio, in-depth tech stuff, if that's what you want to see. But I mean, there's there's loads of that on YouTube, and I always think, is like, I suppose I've, I suppose I've probably got stuff to offer, it, it, like, in that respect. But also, uh, bring like, having a bit more crack than just being like, oh. This is the microphone. This is its polar pattern. Listen to this. Like, if, if people like that, fair enough. But there's so much of that on YouTube now. I'm just trying to show you, like, day-to-day -day life of, like, running a studio space. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, like, actually working with bands and interacting with bands and having, like, the, the more sort of interpersonal between you and the band kind of thing. Maybe that's more interesting. I honestly don't know. Or care. <laughs> oh, well, there's an insight. And on that note... <laughs> if the good Lord spares us and the creeks don't rise, I'll uh, see you again next time. Now get out. That's for, that's a direct Frank Skinner radio show rip. But yeah, we'll see you in a bit. Bye!